think we're going. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mary Elizabeth Jones's Variety Hour. Oh, my favorite! This is this is what I this is what I look forward to every week, the Mary Elizabeth Variety Hour. It stars one of my favorite people, and you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope everyone. I hope everyone is doing well um, this evening, and um, isn't this a beautiful day out? Today? Yes, 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 yes. Let's see, even even the even the uh, robins and the worms are getting along on the, on this day. It's such a beautiful day. Right. So, <laughs> well, my name's Kay Lazar. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Yeah. As always. Yes, we always have a good time doing this show. And uh, I got to tell you something. What what Mary did for me that was so nice. She made me a. I haven't had one of these in years. A peanut butter and jam sandwich. Isn't that something? <laughs> now, do you eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? I do occasionally. Yeah. So I used to eat them a lot more when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, I eat them like occasionally, you know. Yeah. Like if I get extremely hungry. Yeah. You know, so I had just had to eat one, so. I, I you know, actually, uh, we had to delay this show for about 10 minutes because after I ate it, I had to, mm. Get the get my tongue <laughs> off the roof of my mouth. Mm. Right. And peanut butter and jelly sandwich you could eat all day. Really, yeah, you right. eat the eat it and then all and all and, then, and three hours later. Mm. <laughs> oh, that, that's good. That's good. Right. Right. Same with that uh, Goldenberg peanut chews mm. or or, uh, or or Lorna Dunes right. or like <laughs> short short uh, those shortbread cookies. They're all like that, you know. And uh, peanut butter. I used to listen. Peanut butter kept me going. Uh, years ago, um, it got to the point where the only thing I wanted to eat was peanut butter. Yeah. And I, I wasn't a young person either. I was probably in my 20s. And uh, I was living on them. And I, I was on my own in the big city. And I didn't really have enough money to buy groceries or anything. And I never really cooked. Yeah. So I was just constantly eating uh, peanut butter and crackers. Mm, oh, those were good too. And, and coffee. Yeah. And I was... Um, uh, and, then one, and then maybe once, twice, or maybe three times a week, I would actually have a real meal. Uh, I was actually a skinny malink in those days. I, I mean, I was, I was, but it was great because I was all, you know, I'm in my 20s, you're at your best in right, your 20s. Right. And uh, I was eating, uh, and, and, and where I was living in, in, uh, in Ireland, there was, you know, they, they don't have peanut butter like they do in, in America. Mm -hmm. So what happened was I had to uh, go uh, to the health food store, and they sold peanut butter. And the way they sold, they didn't sell it like Jif or, or Skippy or, or, or Peter yeah. Pan. They uh, and it was natural peanut butter, obviously. They sold you like a like a pail of it. Wow! Wow! <laughs> and those days it was a cost about. I mean, it was rather expensive. It was like four dollars for right, the whole for the right, whole thing. And right. I think peanut butter was less yeah. than a dollar. A, can, a jar of it, but uh, and then you get it, and then as soon as you get it, you didn't really want it because right. you opened it up and there was like this much of oil oh. on the top. <laughs> I can tell, tell you a really good yeah. peanut butter that you know, yeah. I tried one time. Yeah, one of my friends introduced me to it. Yeah, it's called Wow Butter. Wow. And you can get it at Walmart. It's 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 the like evil a, empire. It's like a vegan peanut butter. Yeah. So that, well, well, I don't know. Isn't the peanut it's all peanuts? Isn't all peanuts vegan? vegan? Yeah, great. No, is it is it like processed or or is it natural or what? Well, as a vegan, it should be natural. It's natural, I guess. Now, I gotta tell you something about natural peanut butter. Like I said, it has that all that right. oil at the top, yeah. but it's disconcerting to people who are oh, used yeah. to you know typical peanut butter. So you basically have to get whatever you can, a, a knife, a fork, a spoon, yeah. and it's very hard to do this. You have to like, it's almost like churning butter, trying yeah. to get it all mixed up. And yeah. the bigger the, the thing of it, yeah. the harder it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, uh, it's like, um, I, it's like trying to mix uh, water and dirt together to make mud. <laughs> yeah. So, so then. But then you and then then you say, well, maybe I don't need the oil. Yeah. And I think the first time you do this, you say, oh, I, you dump like half the oil and just stir. Yeah. But then it, it's not the same because yeah, part of right. peanuts is that you need that oil. In fact, it, it gets even harder to do in time because right. it's just this block of it turns back to peanuts actually. Yeah. 
<laughs> to the consistency of peanuts, which is kind of hard to chew, you know. So, so I had this, um, so, so I would eat this, and I would eat it till it was gone, and then I'd go to the health food store and buy another one. I must have gone through dozens of these over a few years living there. And uh, then I had no, and I never got tired of eating it. I really enjoyed eating it. And um, it filled you up. It's full of protein. It's full of fat, which maybe if you're not eating a whole lot, right. fat is important. And it's yeah. not, it's the good yeah, fat. Yeah, yeah. It's, the good, it's, it's not the it's fat. Like all the are good fat. Too. Yeah, the stuff that comes from, you know, vegetables and, 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 and nuts are the good fats. So anyway, so I would have, so I, had, so I would, I would, uh, I would eat. So then, so then somebody would actually, you know, I did this in private. Every once in a while, someone would see me do it, like at work or somewhere. And they would say, what, what, what are you eating? What are you eating? And, 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 and you know, while in America, you say, oh, peanut butter. They, what? What's that? Can I have some? You know, they try it out. And and one thing they don't like is they don't like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you know what peanut butter looks like. Yeah. <laughs> so so peep to, people think you're eating that. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll smell it and it doesn't smell right. And then they'll put it in their mouth and... Now, they've never had peanut butter before. And then they'll spit it out. And uh, I say, more for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what they were eating, they ate quite well there. But they, uh, the food was food was like American food there. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, the breakfasts were big and the, uh, a yeah. lot of eggs and sausages and uh, rashers, bacon, you know. Oh, yeah. And they would have... Uh, Oh man, let me tell you, I, 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 when I first got there, I started eating in restaurants thinking I could keep that up, but yeah. it's too expensive. Right, yeah. Uh, so, so I went to breakfast at one restaurant and I don't know what they, I was going to get, but they said, we don't have like, like I think it was home fries or, or, or potatoes or something, uh, uh, fried potatoes. They, they, they said, do you, um, do you want black and white pudding? Mm. You ever heard of black and white pudding? No. Okay. So, black and white pudding. I'm an American. Yeah. Black and white, that must be, I guess, chocolate and vanilla pudding. Maybe. You yeah. know, and it's next to each other. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, bring me the black and white pudding. Black and white pudding is not that. Black and white pudding is the blood that is coagulated and made into a food from, I guess, cows or pigs or something. I don't know where it comes from. But I guess the white part is the white cells, and the the black part is the former red cells. Oh, and you eat wow. this stuff, and it is I spit it out, and I, and I said, I said, what is this? And they said, you asked for black and white pudding, and I said, oh, you know, I didn't want to show that I didn't know what they were talking. Yeah. Oh, that's not what I'm used to getting. Yeah. But then, but thank you, thank you, and I didn't eat it. Yeah, but that's I mean, you got to be very careful when you go to different countries. What they get, like um, when when I was there, um, I don't eat ketchup on anything. I really don't like ketchup. Now, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I don't like it, mm -hmm. and and I won't eat anything that they put ketchup on. And sometimes they'll say, uh, they'll say this in England too. They'll say, uh, "Do you want sauce on that, on your on your burger, sauce on your meat, or something?" And you'll say sauce. You assume like uh, you know something else barbecue sauce or gravy or something and it's or hollandaise sauce and it's ketchup <laughs> and i said what the hell is this and they said it's it's sauce you want it i said what show me the bottle it came and of course the bottle said in like very small some small somewhere catsup or ketchup <laughs> and i said oh i can't eat that so, and uh and and uh, uh what's very popular when i was there was uh a they wouldn't because I'm as I was this American. They said we will not give you um, because we bought white bread for you because we know we heard all Americans like white bread and yeah. I I actually prefer the the dark bread. Oh. So now I'm stuck eating the bread I don't want because I'm obligated because they bought it for me because they thought I liked it. I think they liked it. Yeah. <laughs> it was more expensive yeah. white bread. The brown bread um, and the brown bread is so good in in Europe. It's the Irish soda bread. Oh, I love Irish soda bread. Yeah, yeah. I had it over at a friend's house yeah. a few years ago. Yeah, it's. I mean, they. I tell you what, they eat a lot there is um, uh, when you when you order the typical sandwiches. Like I said, it's not peanut butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't exist there. Um, 
is um, uh, they do have jam there, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Right. They um, uh, is uh, butter and tomatoes on white bread. Oh. Butter, and I, I tell that to people, and um, you know, half the people say ooh, ooh, and then the other half say, oh, I eat that all the time. That's, oh. that's delicious. <laughs> butter, and <laughs> butter and tomatoes on on white bread. Yeah, you know? yeah. And the um, the jams are uh, our jams. Uh, if you're not familiar what the difference between jams and jellies are, jams are big chunks of strawberry and blueberries and boysenberries and stuff like right. that. Well, jellies, you basically only get in America. Jellies, they boil it to a, they boil everything good out of it and it all goes into the air the that was formerly good in the, and then it becomes just this, like this juice really. Yeah. And then they add the sugar and the pectin and all the other gelatin and everything to make the the the, the the jelly and uh when you're a kid you prefer the jelly because you don't want big chunks of stuff you, you, know, you don't like the texture of food when you were a kid you'll like the taste of it you won't like the texture of it i know kids that love that love ketchup but they won't eat uh uh and pizza and spaghetti and stuff but they won't eat tomatoes because of that slithery taste in their mouth right, you know right. and be honest with you i didn't like it either but but then when i got older I got over that, you know. You get over a lot of things, and the, the taste of the, uh, the 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 texture of the tomatoes. But I'm not kidding you. I go to dinner sometimes with people, and and they say, "You want my tomatoes?" <laughs> They've never gotten over that. I love tomatoes. Yeah, I knew I knew a, a woman who was a vegetarian, and she didn't like fruit. I said, "How can you not like fruit?" She goes, "Well, I, I hate meat even more, and I won't eat meat, but I certainly." don't care for fruit either and i said well i said do you eat any fruit do you eat like the what type of yogurt do you get and she said um plain <laughs> <laughs> i said i said do you um uh do you like strawberries yeah everyone likes strawberries yeah. and she goes i like strawberry twizzlers and that's it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a that's a ringing endorsement for the strawberry industry <laughs> we like the twizzlers <laughs> so <laughs> so so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, um, and, and, uh, so you, uh, so what are your sandwiches in the, in the day? Peanut butter and jelly? Peanut butter and jelly, ham and cheese, which I didn't like when I was a kid. I liked peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. I didn't really like meat a whole lot, unless it was a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, a hot dog for, uh, made the grade compared to other meat. Yeah, yeah. I, when I was a kid, I thought, you know, eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, and then, and then uh, I ate meat one day, and I said, I said to my mom, I said, I said, look, I'm eating my vegetables. She goes, that's meat. That's not a vegetable. <laughs> I just assumed it was all vegetables. Yeah. I thought it, I assumed everything I didn't like to eat was vegetables. <laughs> so, so yeah. ham and cheese. Yeah, ham and cheese is basically, or meat and cheese, any sort of meat and cheese and bread to me is a sandwich. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't really need any sauces on it. I don't need uh, any mayonnaise. Certainly don't want mayonnaise on it. I don't want yeah, ketchup on it. Yeah. Mustard. Mustard. I heard it in a movie. You put mustard on something, it becomes a mustard sandwich. Yeah. Everything. It, it overpowers. Doesn't really matter what it tastes. What it originally tastes like. Once you put mustard on it, it tastes like mustard. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you a story. Yeah. My uh, aunt um, used to run a dry cleaning store. Uh -huh. And she said, uh, she, uh, I said, did you learn anything from being a dry cleaner? She goes, you know, because of all the stains people get on their clothes. It says, yeah, not the, I'm never going to eat mustard again. And I said, why not? And, you know, she comes from a people that like to eat mustard. And, and, and um, she said that it wasn't until she was a dry cleaner that she would actually have to pass things through over and over again and then actually take like a... Um, a brush to the mustard stain because that was the hardest to get out. Wow. And she said, and this, and and makes a point, is that if that's if that if it's hard to get out of your clothes, just imagine going through your system. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I always got the idea mustard might be kind of healthy for you, but you yeah. know it's in the Bible and the mustards, the yeah, mustard mustards, seed. Yeah, mustards are a grain of a mustard. The gram of yeah, they. Faith yeah, is as great as a mustard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. So the mustard. Yeah, they equate faith that. with it. They, they can't be all that bad. I love that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, tell the story. Well, um, the mustard seed um, in front of the sun bowl, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, they say faith is as great as a mustard seed, mm -hmm. which is true. Mm -hmm. Because you can get like a necklace 
Yeah. And you have to put you have to put like a little the little mustard seed inside the little glass. Yeah. The pendant, you know. Yeah. And then you can wear it, you know, you yeah. know, because you know I know God is with you and everything. Yes. So yeah. so God in the form of mustard. Yes. 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 So 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 yeah, I didn't know I didn't know going to the Going to the hot dog stand was a religious experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you, if you, you could mm-hmm. find a must, an actual mustard mm-hmm. seed if you, like, rinse it out. Yeah. It's hard to find, but, yeah. it's, you know. I don't even know where mustard comes I'm from. I'm sure you probably find a little mustard. Yeah. yeah in the Middle East, it's probably. Yeah. Probably Middle East, yes. It's probably where all, I don't know anything about mustard. I mean, where, I've never seen mustard being made. Yeah. I know that when I was a kid, all there was was French's mustard. Oh yeah, me too. And then there was the brown mustard, the Goulden's, I grew up on all that stuff. and great gray poupon, and uh, and all those and the white wine uh, uh, yeah, mustard. Yeah. They're all good. And um, I like honey mustard. Yeah, well, honey mustard was not around when I was a little kid. Had they had honey mustard when I was a kid, it would have changed my whole concept of mustard. Mm. I liked mustard only because. Everyone else didn't like it, so I yeah I was one of those kids. <laughs> now I'd still like mustard, right. but I I mean I don't have a problem with mustard. It's just that I don't. Um, I, uh, I I tell you something about mustard that's very interesting. Like you said, uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, historic and, and, and biblical uh, uh, sor- uh, sources. There's also uh, mustard was um, when a few years ago when that spice came out that it was so. Uh, that was so great. Turmeric. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that stuff. Or turmeric. It's actually turmeric is actually in um, in uh, a lot of uh, Indian cooking and stuff. Oh yeah, I love a spi- It's a spice. And turmeric, if and people didn't know for all these years, they were getting their share of turmeric in um, in in yellow mustard. Oh yeah. It's just a just a standard yellow French's mustard. I'm not sure about the other styles of mustard, but. But it's in the yellow mustard, which is really, um, you know, I, I got to the point where, you know, with hot dogs, I, I try to eat them without the roll and without any yeah. stuff on it. If I'm at a barbecue or something, then I'll have a roll. I like, I like the and hot dog I, and, grill. Oh, yeah. That's Yeah. It's very hard to mess up a, a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> They're always good. Yeah. I remember my mom. I remember, my, you know, my mom was always giving me lectures about food. One of the times I remember, she she uh, uh, she made some dinner that I didn't want to eat, and she goes, "Is there anything you do want to eat?" And I said, "Yeah, do you have a hot dog?" And she goes, "You're not going to get a hot dog. You're going to starve before I give you a hot dog. You can have a hot dog tomorrow for lunch, but you're not going to get one for dinner." And she said that, and this is really cool what she said. This was, you know, back at the time when you know the military was very big and, yeah, the, yeah. and the wars were going on and everything. She goes, "You know, if you join the army." And you ask for a hot dog, they're gonna just gonna throw a can of beans at you and say, "Eat this, or eat nothing." And so I said, "Then I won't join the army." <laughs> you know, th- people try to impress you. You yeah. know, you know, they won't let you eat hot dogs in the army. Well, I don't want. That's one good. That's one reason I don't want to join them. They give you. A, they shave your head when you're in the army. Yeah, keep them coming. <laughs> And yet I would talk to kids. I hate to be uh, disrespectful or unpatriotic because I'm not. Because yeah, I, 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 I'm not either, I have the greatest, utmost respect for the people in the military now. Yeah. And the kid, when I was a kid, I didn't. You yeah. know, you're, yeah. you're a kid. You know, I don't know any better. But when I was a kid, <laughs> they, they would tell me all this. I used to know kids that just couldn't wait to join the army when they got out of high school. They were like little kids, like eight years old, and they oh, say, "Oh man, I can't wait uh, for ten years from now." Ten long, and you know, when you're a kid, ten years is a long time. Wait all this long time waiting for to join the army and go to war, and, and you know, and, I, and you know, for some reason, I did that just didn't did not appeal to me. Did I tell you <laughs> that my uncle, one of my uncles, was in the army? Years mm-hmm. ago, like, when I was yeah, little up. kid, yeah. Yeah, did I tell you that um, he called, when he was in the army in Hawaii, he was sleeping in mm-hmm. the Hawaii at the time. Yeah. And he would call my grandfather and say, let me out of here. And then, <laughs> and then uh, he was like. I quit. And then, and then my grandfather was like, well, Rodney, I can't really let you out. I don't think that you're supposed to get out. I'm not the president. Or something. <laughs> but it was pretty hilarious on what my grandfather used to tell me about 
But I learned something about joining the army is that you, um, you know, a lot of times in the movies, you're led to believe that as soon as you sign on the dotted line, you're, you're yeah. in the army and yeah. you're there for three years or so. And you're at their beck and call. I mean, they want to send you to the uh, war or something, uh, you, you know. But uh, as soon yeah. as you're sworn in, you're a member of the army. But then somebody told me that you have more power than you think. And when they recruit you for the army or any of the uh, military, you you're, it's a, you can negotiate with them. You may not negotiate so much on money, but you can certainly negotiate. You know, when you start, what uh, what uh, w you know what what benefits you will get. Right. Am yeah. I benefit? Will I get uh, into uh, college after after yeah. my you know get get some some right. tuition right. break or yeah. something? Yeah. The GI Bill. I mean, you. In other words, in other words. Don't be hasty. Don't just sign and say I'm leaving and going. Like in the movies, it's, it's always that way. Yeah. And and uh, and and when I was a kid, the, the the army that appealed to me the most was the Foreign Legion. <laughs> <laughs> it was a French group, and there was movies about it that gave it the very romantic sort of uh, uh, devil may care, yeah. see the world sort of place. Yeah. But then you realize you're fighting, you know, in the Sudan. <laughs> And Egypt and places like that, Saudi Arabia. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't have nothing against those people. <laughs> and you're not even fighting for America; you're fighting for the French. <laughs> so you know, if you don't like snails or <laughs> or <Yeah>. frog legs, <laughs> no. Nah, but I've been to, and France is fine. But I mean, uh, but you know, you don't realize as a kid. You, you, I saw Laurel. I see like every other Laurel and Hardy movie. They joined the Foreign Legion. Yeah. And something goes wrong. You know, they screw up. And, and um, uh, the, the, what was the, the 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 Four Feathers was a great movie yeah. about that, and the Bo Jest. You know, there's a lot of stuff about the Foreign Legion. A lot of operas about the Foreign Legion. A lot of Nelson Eddy. I think Nelson Eddy was in one. You know, Legionnaire was one. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so and then and you know, of course all, all I heard about was the food that they. And then 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 people would say the food is pretty good. It's all free. And I said, yeah. But it's nothing you from what and I, I said I, I know one thing about the food there they don't give you hot dogs <laughs> according to my mom nothing my mom said about hot dogs it was really cool was um my, I you know I, I was re real stickler for hot dog uh, uh, etiquette and everything <laughs> so she would put a hot dog on the uh, uh, in, in, in a roll and, and I, I I liked relish on it and I liked um, I don't like mustard on it. For a time, I liked onions on it. And then I started just piling stuff up. I just liked uh, onions, um, um, chili. Mm. I mean, you go to go to like a lot of these convenience stores where they sell hot dogs, you just start piling cheese. And, oh, wow, yeah. and he, there's not, the hot dog, you can almost forget the hot dog and just eat the, <laughs> eat the, whole, the whole salad on your, on your roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you had the substance called hot dog pot? No. Well, they have they advertise they advertise it um, a couple times. Uh, I, I saw that the, it was like an old old tiny restaurant from like the 1950s or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was I think it was pretty popular back then or something. And uh, a few years ago, I saw a recipe about it. No, no, I mean, was it just hot dogs and crust? Yeah, it's got it's got like a crust, and you know you smush. You blend the hot dog, the actual hot dog, yeah. into the blender. Oh, okay, but that, okay, so it's a liquefied hot dog yeah. or a chopped up hot dog, probably. Yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's a pot, but it's an unusual. Is it like a like a? I guess it would be like a chicken pot pie or something, yeah, only with hot dog, like, yeah, only yeah. with hot dogs in it. Well, those yeah. are great. I used to love those. I mean, it kid. doesn't have like the uh, crust on top, but it does have the crust on the bottom. Okay. But you know, you get like you know smushed hot dog. Smush. I mean, it's is like there what's the, is there? Well, what's the flavor? Is there? Did they put like uh, tomatoes or cheese or what? What else is in it? I think it's just regular hot dog and, and ketchup and mustard and some other stuff. Oh, that's yeah. It's, it's, sounds but delightful. So I far. might have to show you a picture. I have. I had to send it to you one time. One day. Uh, yeah. Don't like don't make it for me. I no, probably no. won't eat it. No, 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 no. no. Probably I only want one hot dog usually. It doesn't seem appetizing, but looks kind of interesting. I only want one hot dog. One hot dog is fine. Two yeah. hot dogs is too, it's like candy bars. 
They eat a second one, and why did they do that? Yeah. The first one was good. I don't have to eat I the second one. I just thought it was interesting that, you know, talk about that because, you know, speaking of, speaking of hot dogs, you know, have you heard of a person called Hot Dog Pie? So, I've heard of everything, and I've never heard of that. That's unusual. So. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look that to me. <laughs> hamburger yeah. pie sounds good. Oh, yeah, I like hamburger pie. <laughs> that's like meat pie, minced yeah. meat pie. Like a tamale pie. I think uh, I think um, uh, Sweeney Todd gave meat pies a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> but other than the, if you if you don't think of Sweeney Todd, then meat pies are very delicious, very yeah. British food, pub food. Now, um, uh, <laughs> so so I was very stickler for for etiquette, yeah. how to eat a hot dog. Right. So my mom, we didn't have hot dog rolls one day, and my mom put the hot dog. In a piece of bread, and you know, put the relish and everything on there. Says, "Here's your hot dog." There you go. And I said, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> you might have. You might have been up. Yeah. At the wall, he would have something. Yeah. And I got so tired of them. I didn't want to eat them anymore. <laughs> I forget it. You know, and my appetite is not. Well, I know kids that, you know, you must be the exception. I know kids that will eat chicken tenders every day. They don't ever get tired of it. No. They don't get t- a dinosaur chicken. They don't mm-hmm. get tired. They don't yeah. get tired of hot dogs. I never got tired of hot dogs. Yeah. And um, when I was a kid, I liked hot dogs better than hamburgers. And then I, I got into a phase where I would just ate. I didn't want hot dogs at all. Right. Right. Hamburgers I thought were actually meat. Hot dogs, you don't know what's in. Right. And then, um, and then, uh, And then I went back to hot dogs. <laughs> And yeah. I like hamburgers too, but uh, in fact, hamburgers I feel is more of a meal. Hot right. dogs more of a snack. Yeah. But anyway, so so there was no roll. There was a piece of bread, mm-hmm. uh, just a slice of bread, with and a hot dog in it. And I said, "What's this?" And and mom said, "You know, if you go to Howard Johnson's, this is how they'll serve you a hot dog." I said, "Well, I'm not going to Howard Johnson's. I'm eating it here. <laughs> Where's my roll?" Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. Hot dog rolls are the only type of bread that looks like that. <laughs> you don't yeah. see a hot dog roll. Yeah. I mean, people put other stuff in it, but uh, but it's basically still a hot dog roll. That's what they call it at the, at the bakery. So anyway, so then like a year later, I'm just a little kid. I'm like six years old. Uh, I, I'm, I'm treated to a day at a Howard Johnson's. Yeah. <laughs> Hojo's. And and I order a hot dog because that's the only thing I want to eat. I don't want to eat their steamed clams or their fried clams or their... Oh, or their, their fried clams. Well, I, I was a little kid. I wasn't going to eat that. I wasn't going to eat anything that came out of a shell. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, got, I ordered a hot dog. And, you know, it takes forever to get anything at Howard Johnson's in the day. So you wait there for an hour with your friends and you're talking. And then halfway through our conversation, to me, I didn't care if the food never came. I just wanted to. I was just there to talk. Yeah. In fact, they used to get mad at me for eating so slow. Yeah. They said, uh, and then, and then, whenever they asked me a question, I'd go into a long speech. Mm-hmm. So times have changed so much about me now. <laughs> I'd go into a long speech, and then what happens was they would say, uh, "Less, less, less talking and more eating, Kevin. We gotta get out of here." <laughs> I'm still that way with at, at, at some at some uh, dinner parties and stuff. I say, "Hey, you want the birthday cake? Bring the birthday cake." And I'm not finished. I'm still eating my my. <laughs> My vegetables. I'm still on my salad. Okay. So anyway, so so halfway through this uh, this time at, at, at Howard Johnson's, uh, they don't give you a hot dog roll. They give you a, a piece of bread. Oh, I, oh. So then it comes and it comes in a hot dog roll. I go. But I kept a part of the roll and brought it home. I said, and my mom forgot all about this. I said, hey, see, you know what this is? A hot dog roll. Yes, it's a hot dog roll from Howard Johnson's. What a big liar you are to tell me that that they just put in a piece of bread. They make it a hot dog roll like it should be, and like you should be doing. <laughs> anyway, I every once in a while have this game, and I, I'm going to play this game with you about food, where we try to top each other what terrible food we've eaten. <laughs> All right? <laughs> like, for example... You could say, I've eaten chocolate-covered ants. <laughs> yeah. But it has to be true. Yeah, And then you could tell me 
what what the food was and, and how we described it. So, so uh, I could get started. I'll, I'll get this started. I'll get started. I have eaten calamari. That's squid. I love calamari. You like calamari? Yes. Okay. But the first time I had it, I, I thought, I'm eating the squid. I'm eating this character from, from the monster of the deep, <laughs> 20,000 leagues under the sea. It was actually an octopus. Maybe it was a squid, but it scared scared me. And I, and I thought, so what else have you, what have you eaten? I tried Vienna sausage and it was horrible. You don't like Vienna sausage? Yeah. Yes. Vienna sausage, I see people eating that when I was a kid. I could only eat it like it were, as if it were a hot dog cooked, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I saw people just eat with that ge ge gelatin that, and they eat it cold out of the can. Yeah. I guess it's good. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's. I, I, they find it good, but yeah, it's something I've never done. Yeah. Uh, I have eaten. Okay, it's my turn now. I have eaten. Um, I have. Uh, oh, I have eaten a pig's foot. <laughs> yeah, that's nasty. I've eat, I ate a pig's foot, and and a lot of people eat them, and they and I thought you know what a pig is, you know what pork is, you know what uh, bacon is, you know what ham is. So I yeah, thought what this, bacon. so I thought this is gonna not be all that different from that, but it was. And uh, what didn't wasn't that it tasted bad? It just was all bones and yeah. all. Basically, you had to tear apart the bones, which was kind of hard yeah. to get. And then there'd be a little bit of meat in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, 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 I've eaten a... Oh, they, they, um, they eat them in Ireland all the time. And they call them crew beans. Mm -hmm. and, 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 there's a, and some people just would prefer to eat the, the pig's foot than they would eat the... Uh, <laughs> than they would eat like, like uh, any, anything else. Especially if they've had in Ireland like about 10 pints of Guinness or something. So they'll eat, uh, they'll eat anything. So anyway, so you eat the... the, um, the um, so, 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 so you eat the, the, the pig's foot and they'll actually, there's actually a rhyme that, uh, that women, that mothers tell their daughters about, about crew beans. Right. And the crew beans in the kitchen, crew beans in the pan. If you can't cook crew beans, you'll never get a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. What's yours? Pot, like spam or something? Yeah. Yeah. What that spam? Spam yeah, is good. Spam. I, do, I mean, spam. I do like spam. I like well, spam is potted meat. Is it? How was this well, different from? Is, how was this different? Potted meat is like a chopped up. Like a... I know that that uh, spam is very popular in Hawaii, mm. and and the Hormel company sends all their I do like spam. the majority of their spam to Hawaii because there's such a market for it. And and if you go to Hawaii, go to the grocery stores, you see the spam. It's totally different than than here in the rest of America. It's actually so um, it's weird. They they I mean you basically only have salted and unsalted or something or. But there they have all different, you know, honey, honey, honey glazed spam, <laughs> garlic flavored spam. I mean, it's like uh, truly amazing, they said. Yeah. And um, spam was very important after World War II. Yeah. A lot of countries were rationing food, uh, uh, not America, but uh, and we, we had plenty of meat. So we sent a lot of our meat, uh, excess meat there. And, and spam was was a godsend. <laughs> They just—I mean, they, when you're not eating meat at all, spam, you know, is the greatest. Of, I used to love spam. Though. Yeah. I oh yeah, spam. Frying pan. Yeah. Oh man, it was so good. Spam. There's no reason why spam shouldn't be good. Now, what was this potted meat like? Potted meat was kind of like a tuna, like a tuna fish. Okay. It's a—I uh, mean, I like tuna fish better. Yeah. But the potted meat is like a double of ham mm -hmm. in a can. Mm-hmm. My dad made me taste it one time. It was. I mean, it was good in a way, but. But you tasted it. But I tasted it once, okay. for like two seconds. And I've it. eaten. I tell you what, my grandmother made me once. It was this very red, cold meat, and she didn't tell me what it was until after I ate some of it, and I didn't like it. Okay, what is it? She says it's tongue. Oh. <laughs> What's the old joke? Uh, it goes, it goes. Uh, I went to the waiter sent me tongue. And I said, I don't want to eat anything that comes out of the mouth of a cow. <laughs> so he sent me eggs instead. <laughs> yeah, your, gra your grandma's <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, so yeah, and I ate, that's the only time I ever had tongue. 
Okay, who, what, do you have anything else? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, those, um, you know those big fat cookie peelers, the cookie ones from the peeler? Mm-hmm. I used to didn't like those. But you didn't like those? Yeah. Well, but that's just, that's not meat. I like those. That's not an animal. <laughs> Unless the milk comes from some somewhere like a like a cat or something. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um. oh I can tell you. I uh, I'll, I'll give you one more. I uh, I uh, okay. I've eaten oh uh, chitterlings, chitlins. I haven't didn't eat it a lot, but a guy was making it. We all smelled out what it smelled like. It smelled weird. So then. We, uh, so, and of course he wanted the shirt. Do you want it? Do you want it? Said, no! It was a, no, no, get that out of here. And, and then I said, I'll, I'll take a bite of it. Because I, you know, people were, didn't kill anyone. They ate it, then, basically it was, it's the, um, the intestines. Things, I think. And, uh, but it's all cleaned up and everything. I've had haggis. That is, uh, the stomach of a sheep. In, uh, in. Like they don't gizzards. sell it. They don't sell it. Yeah, okay, chicken gizzards. Yeah, I like those. I the first time I had chicken gizzards, I liked it, but then over time, I didn't like it. Yeah. They're basically it's basically a type of liver. A lot of people don't like liver. I do like chicken liver though. You no, like chicken? Well, like chicken liver is gizzards, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't like regular liver. Yeah, you don't but like I, regular. But I like chicken liver. Used to be liver was the healthiest food for you. Then they found out all the cholesterol that's in it, and then they said it's not as healthy as it, as people thought. And, I know people just eat liver all the time. It's a, it was very cheap at the store, so people would buy it. And um, but anyway, I'm, I'm I'm doing this game I just did with yeah. you, uh, with a friend of mine, and and someone and his wife was overhearing us, and she came in and goes, "I got something that can beat you all." All this talk about uh, chicken livers and <laughs> yeah. and tongue and and calamari and all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I said, "What did you eat?" And she said. I've eaten a hot dog. <laughs> I don't know what is in a hot dog. <laughs> At least you guys know what's in those what you were talking about. <laughs> I said, you know, you may have us beat. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and um and uh what else? So uh you know, um so I always feel the best food I ever get is on is on a movie set. <laughs> a food food is, if it's free. It's it's the it's it. I don't know food that's free. I'll eat all day, but but if I have to pay for it, it better be something I like. <laughs> so we made a movie. Yes. Uh, uh, that I I forgot we made it. We made it before the pandemic. Yeah. And um. Like yeah, and then and then it came on the internet. Maybe we'll we'll put it in the uh, yeah. in the uh, comments if we're allowed. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when people make something, they don't want everyone to see it. They might want the people who are in it might see it. But then but then if you you know so uh, maybe if we put it up, they'll more people see it and they say, give us more of that that wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, tell us about the show we were in. Yes, uh, we were. It was called the American Kid Bronx. Yeah. It was mostly you know kid actors in it, but. Us adults were kind of like extras, like, and it was it was fun to make, though, you know. Yeah, and but what did we play? The parents? you played the principal, and I played the lunch lady. You know the lunch lady. <laughs> and I, uh, you know, just plop it on your plate of mashed potatoes. Even though, <laughs> even though I did wear like a salmon tie and like a and stuff, and I just kind of like left it off because <laughs> in case they wanted me for something. <laughs> but they just put me in the lunch lady part, you know. Did you ever? I don't remember a cafeteria scene in that. No. <laughs> I, at first, I thought it was going to be a cafeteria. Yeah, with the hair net and the. Yeah. But, <laughs> the but we were just walking down the hallway. Yeah. Yes. I was so you know I watched it because I wanted to see it, yeah. and then I forgot that I was even in it, and I'm not only. Even in it, we, you and I are like the first people in it. We actually walk, and we're we have dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> and then I come up later on. It's basically a kids show, though. Right. The kids right. are the real stars. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and so uh, and so I play the high school principal. Yeah, and I play the <laughs> high school lunch lady. I play the cool with it. No, I play a typical <laughs> high school principal you that you hated when you were a kid. <laughs> I was the fancy looking lunch lady. Yeah. I had a dress on instead of the. 
I always tell people, whenever people tell me what a right. movie I'm in is about, I always say, like, in this case, it was all about the life of Pocahontas. I think what happens is yeah, was- there's a flashback in it, and then you then they have a dramatization of the children yeah. playing uh, Pocahontas, like in a pageant or something. Yeah, there, there and, was a scene where the Pocahontas was. Yeah. And I was just playing background with the mm-hmm. Yeah. So I always say, so when people ask me, like, if, you know, like, like, um, like, for example, I was in The Wizard of Oz, and I played The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And they say, well, what's, you know, can you describe, you know, your part? And I said, well, it's about this uh, genius who uh, makes his way on a balloon, and he found, and becomes a uh, the, the leader of this emerald town in uh, nobody knows where, somewhere over the rainbow. And it's all about him. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a, a little girl that's lost, and a lion, and a tin man, and <laughs> and a scarecrow, and there, and a and a couple of witches. But it's mainly about the one guy because his name is in the title. Yeah. And then I'm in it. I'm in the play, The Wizard of Oz, just like the movie. I was in The Wizard of Oz. Yes. You played. You play, I played the witch girl and the toad. Yeah. The tree. Oh, one of the trees, yeah. yeah but but, I, but whenever I, someone asks me what what anything's about, I always talk about what I did, and then I said, and there's also a little girl and a and a lion and a and a scarecrow and a tin man and a couple of witches. Meaning that yeah. that you know the joke is that all I all I know from the from the play is what I did. Yeah. <laughs> when I read when I read a script, when they yeah. give me a script, yeah. I go I go nonsense 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 nonsense. Oh my line nonsense. <laughs> My speech. <laughs> Some people actually count lines in in Hollywood yeah. because they don't want they don't want people <laughs> they don't want to have more lines than, they don't want to have less lines than somebody else. Sometimes <laughs> I read the lines before my eyes. Yeah. That's what I usually do. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I uh, people say, how come you don't know everyone else's lines like a good actor should? I said, no, I'm a good actor. I said, what do you mean? Says it says well in, if I'm going to be a realistic method actor, and be in, immersed in the part, then I don't know what that person's going to say. Yeah. It's going to be all a surprise to me. <laughs> and when they say, you know, Kevin, it's <laughs> yeah. where are you going? And yeah. then, oh, and then I become an actor. I have I I live over the hill, and then <laughs> I go in the I am in the house, and then I go in the car. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> If I knew their lines, then why why even have to show up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. and, and, but this so so um so uh so I play the principal, and <laughs> I've never played a principal before. <laughs> and I play you know, and, and the trouble is I'm I would never make a good principal because to me the principal is the scariest guy I knew growing up yeah, because they're oh, always yeah. a, they're always going to send you to the principal's office, and if you think the teacher is bad. <laughs> Principles, uh, principles. <laughs> you don't know what trouble you're in for. And then you get home and your mom and dad start yelling at you. So, gosh. Oh, yeah. All I remember being growing up was being yelled at. That's what I like about being an adult. I don't get yelled at as much anymore. Not as much. I still get yelled at. But <laughs> yeah, I, Not, I can walk away. I don't need that. When I was growing up, um, I, I, I had a sister, but then she died. And Sometimes write the note home, yeah. And your and my mom and your parents, they'll be like, Mary, yeah. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> a note home, that note, and you knew you had to give it to them because yeah. they it would come back that they, they didn't get it, it. yeah. You know, you have to yeah. Be at that yeah, oh, yeah. I, I was always like, uh, I couldn't watch television that night or didn't get dessert. <laughs> I mean, it was all of this, the work. Said, you know, have to do your homework earlier. I hated doing homework. Yeah. I tell you something. Seven o'clock comes around. And I said, boy, if I were like twelve years old, I'd be doing homework right now. <laughs> hating, hating it. <laughs> now I'm now now I can watch Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so. Uh, so so yeah so we're in a in a show, um, so American Kid Chronicles, mm-hmm. and there must be a couple dozen of these or how many did they make? There should be some more, I think, sometime in the future. I mean, is they finished making other ones? Well, not yet. We so they've only made the one. Yeah, that one. So it's the American Kid Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> 
in the singular. <laughs> Pocahontas. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Later on, we're going to get, get, do a medley of our greatest hit. <laughs> oh my god. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> Chronicle. You know what a chronicle is? I like something from a science fiction story. <laughs> like, a, like a series or something. Series. Series of one. <laughs> a series. <laughs> now, uh, oh, <laughs> now I know you like music. You've been listening to a lot of music lately. Yes. Like, you like Ray. Yes, Ray yeah. Charles yeah. and um, who else? Uh, Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. That's and, what you listen to, yeah. Yeah. yeah I you mentioned earlier Roberta Flack. Yeah, Roberta Flack, Flack was really good. Killing Me Softly with His Claws. Yes, yeah, she, she also did other things, too. You know. you know, she won an award once. First time ever I saw your face. It was yeah, the song of the year. Well, what was weird was, was I, it wasn't really popular on the record, it, on the radio. It was, in fact, when, when I heard that she won, I thought it was for the uh, same year, I think, Killing Me Softly with His Claws. Oh, that's a good song. I never heard of that song, and then over the years I have heard that song, and it was, and it is a great song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, but uh, don't know a whole lot about her. I know that she wrote mm. a song. No, she didn't write the song. She sang the song. Um, Charlie Fox wrote the song. Yeah. It was called "Killing Me Softly" with his song, and it was based on her or somebody going to see a mm. a singer oh. in a nightclub, and he was so good. And he wasn't famous. And then years later, he became famous. You know who that was? <laughs> Donny Hathaway. You almost got it. Don McLean oh. of American Pie fame. Yeah, she did something most of the time with Donny Hathaway. Donny Hathaway. When she committed suicide, mm -hmm. you know, back in the... I'm not really sure actually what year he passed, yeah. but... It was a shame because he was talented. Well, that's, you know, suicide, mental illness is terrible. Yeah, thing. I mean, I yeah. know. Depression. Yeah. 100%... Is, it's kind of glib to say this, but it's... The closer I get to you, they both yeah, sung that one. Yeah. The 100% of suicides suffer from depression. Meaning right. that people say, oh, he was driven to suicide or or he, or he, or if, if, if he were, if he didn't have that job or yeah. that, that wife or, or husband or something, they, they, they wouldn't have committed. No, they probably still would have. Yeah. It's just that, just that they would have done it maybe a little down further down the line but but yes and that's something and it's something that's always been with us you yeah. know i mean cleopatra yeah <laughs> of, of what uh, uh two thousand years ago committed suicide almost everyone in shakespeare committed suicide yeah. so it's not something that's uh you know I, I don't think um i don't think aristotle no socrates i don't think he committed i think he was forced to drink the hemlock yeah. <laughs> for corrupting the youth yeah. yeah but uh but yeah but suicide is a terrible thing and um and, uh, you know, it can happen to anybody. I mean, it could happen to in any family, I should say. Right. So, uh, I always told my mom that, because that, uh, I have a real zest for life. I just love waking up every day and, and taking too. on it. And you do blessed. too. And if I ever, like, move to a different town and, and you hear my death, sudden death, and they said he committed suicide, don't believe it. <laughs> Somebody murdered. And a murder was made to look like a suicide. <laughs> yeah. And uh, because I'm, I'm here, I'm here for the, I'm here for the long haul. <laughs> yes, me too. And um, and and let's have fun together. Okay, now, uh, so but uh, uh, so Donnie, uh, Don McLean, uh, well, oh, we were talking about Ray Charles. Tell me about what you what you like about Ray. Ray Charles was really talented as well. The movie was good. Yes, the movie <laughs> Ray with Jamie Fox. He was really good at that. Movie. Oh yeah. And um, he. He led a terrible life too mm -hmm. back when he was a child. He caught glaucoma. Yeah. And he, the the, and he never got it regained the sight again. Yeah, his brother, In those days, they probably could have done something. Yeah. We're talking about the nineteen, early nineteen forties. Yeah. yeah. And his brother passed away too. His. And he and he drowned in this bucket. Yeah, his brother. Yeah. 
There's a, there's, a, there's another movie about like Johnny Cash and they have similar stories. The only difference is that he didn't he didn't go blind, <laughs> uh, 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 Johnny Cash. But the similar story is the brother, older brother dies, and they and the uh, the, the the famous brother gets yeah. uh, get, get, get you know uh, uh, has the guilt and, yeah. and they they carry their whole life with them. Right. Uh, the, Ray um, and Ray then became a uh, he was became famous and then he be- developed a heroin addict. He was a heroin addict for many right, years. It right. wasn't until like I think 1970 or so that he finally licked it, and he lived another what 30 years, 30, 35 years after that. Yeah. yeah. And I saw him. I saw Ray twice. I saw him uh, at the uh, what's now used to be called the Moss, now the Altria Theater. Mm-hmm. And I had a Super 8 camera, and I filmed it, him singing, and it looks great. It looks great. Also. Well, it's kind of neat about uh, Ray. They didn't do this in the early days, but they did it later on. But I saw it for the first time was when he got on stage, he had to have someone walk with him. Whenever yeah. you saw him on a talk show, so he was already at the piano. They probably had to do that with Stevie Wonder, too. Well, they do that with all those guys. But but in the case of um, of Ray, they tried to pretend that he was just sitting at the piano the whole time. Uh... <laughs> he never had to go anywhere. But then I saw, you, you know, whenever he was on Carson, they'd bring him up on the on the stage and that someone would have to help him, yeah. help him there. Ray, um, Ray Charles, and then I saw him a second time, pretty much, the, I think he did the, pretty much the same show all the time, same, people came to hear the same songs, you know, he didn't really try to uh, vary his, I mean, he had so many good hits, um, he pretty much had a hit song with every album, so if you talk about a 50 year to career, there's like 50 songs <laughs> people wanted to hear. And uh, and yet, when he appeared on like a, a talk show, he wouldn't sing any of those songs. He would sing something right. well, like one of his album cuts, right, right. like a Gershwin song or something. He has a very good version of a song called um, called uh, "How Long Has This Been Going On." Oh. I mean, I think it's one of my favorite versions of it. He has a version of um, "What'll I Do," Irving Berlin song, and they're all and and they're and they're such. But you know, they're not. I can't stop loving you. They're not. Uh, George on my mind. I thought those were his original hits, but they're not. At the time, "I Can't Stop Loving You" is a uh, was a was a hit ten years before Ray sang it. It yeah. was on his country music album. Don Gibson wrote it, and then uh, what's the other one? Uh, George on my mind's a Hoagie Carmichael song. Mm, my, it's about a woman named George. It's not about uh, the state. <laughs> yeah, my favorite was "I'm Killing My." Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those I think were, were original too. original hits for him. Yeah. yeah. Hit the road, Jack. And, yeah. and and unchain my, unchain my heart is so good. Yeah. Hey. I mean they're all good. In fact, he was one of those singers that uh, was all uh, his versions of songs were were. I mean, if you like a particular song, like "Happy Birthday to Me" or something, or "America the Beautiful," which he did record. Uh, his version is a iconic version of it. He would sing the way you would expect Ray Charles would sing the song, right. and, and and with the high caliber. He uh, Ray. Let me tell you about. Um, uh, what was I going to say about Ray? He. Uh, yeah, and uh, unchained. And uh, my dad told me um, that uh, he, he said he said he he came late to Ray Charles, like you know. It wasn't yeah. until the 1960s where he actually started listening to Ray Charles. Yeah. He's been he was around since I guess the early 50s, yeah. and he he told me you know I that Ray Charles is a really good singer and I and he said yeah he's a good singer. I I mean I didn't care for him as a little kid, but he said you know why he's a good singer? Mm-hmm. And I said why? I said well you if you go to a church like a like a like a gospel singer yeah. or 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 a spiritual singer, yes. He sings exactly that style. But he doesn't sing religious songs. He sings, you know, popular songs like George on my mind or I can't stop loving you or even, you know, Gershwin songs. And he sings them in that style. And and at that time, no one else was doing that. I mean, they were singing, you know, if they had a like a show tune in a, in a musical, they would just sing it the way it was probably done in the musical. Well, I... But he would try to twist it around and try to turn it into almost like a spiritual or gospel yeah. sounding oh, yeah. song. Yeah. yeah. He would have the same elements of a of a gospel song in in uh, the particular song he was singing. That right. was every song he sang. <laughs> right. Um, speaking of that, um, one of my old church old teachers did songs like that. Yeah. They would take the original, you know, non-gospel song or whatever, yeah. and then they would, like, 
changed the lyrics to that original song you know, into gospel lyrics. Oh, oh! They would put so, yeah. They would make it a. They make it. They take a non-religious song into a religious right, song. Yes, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's going to stop them. Good, but, I mean, <laughs> you remember any particular one in particular that they did that to that um, we might know? Just my imagination by the Temptations. Oh yeah, just my imagination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they put like more religious sounding yes, lyrics to yeah. it, and then kept kind of the chorus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that makes sense. Yeah. Right, right. They should do that with every song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then then you realize a lot of your great singers, like Ray Charles, did learn in the church. Uh, black singers like uh, yeah, some of them Aretha. Did start in the church. Aretha was uh, was, was, uh, was, was uh, her father was a great was, uh, great uh, 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 preacher. So yeah. was Whitney Houston. Whitney and her mom, you know, was a singer too. So yeah, she... mother's still around. Yeah, yeah I know. Sissy. And then there was um. Then there was, uh, uh, then there were the, I think I mentioned this before, the Neville brothers. Oh, yeah. Are, like are, are from New Orleans, but they're Catholics. Oh, yeah. And they learned in the in the, the Catholic choir. Yeah, we like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's something else. The Neville yeah, brothers. I like that. Yeah. Aaron Neville did a solo album. Yeah, well, he's actually done quite a few. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, Aaron is he the guy. He did something with Linda Ronstadt as well, too. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Which is like in the late 80s, early much, 90s. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard, we were talking about uh, how uh, Rod Stewart sounds like a girl mm-hmm. at times. Uh, we were talking how the first time I heard Aaron Neville yeah. just on a record, I thought it was a woman because I never heard a man right. sing that high. Then he not only, when you look at what he what he looks like, he doesn't look anything at all like a woman. He, he looks like the toughest guy you will ever meet <laughs> with a tattoo on his face and everything. Yeah. Mm, yeah. It's like a bronze. It's called I I it's a it's a funny term they use. It's called a falsetto. Oh. And when a man when a woman has it, I guess they call it a soprano, but mm. when a man has it, it's uh it's he kinda erases all the deepness out of his voice right. and sings very high. There's Tiny Tim, if you remember. There was uh oh, Aaron I, Neville. Yes. Um a few, there's a few people like that. Yeah. Uh, uh they're the only ones I that come to mind. Right. <laughs> there was I remember there was a, a band called the Stylistics. Oh, wow, and I and they had a female singer and then I saw them on like Soul Train and then I realized that wasn't a woman. It was a, it was a big it was like a, a, a mean looking big man <laughs> with a beard and everything. Singing like this. <laughs> yeah, he said that was a, that's the guy, yeah. You yeah, I thought that was a woman. Yeah. Yeah. In its own way, I wish I could sing like that. Yeah. I'm kind of stuck with this deep voice. <laughs> oh, well. It's my voice. <laughs> yeah. I, I always wanted to be this great singer. and and, and uh, But I'm, I, I can't sing like you. You're such a great singer. But, but I could do the best I can. But then I realized people with my voice, you know, deep announcing, you know, mm-hmm. I was on the radio. I was, I was sports announcing. I was a... State fair announcing all this stuff about carnival barker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these guys aren't usually singers. I mean, Larry King has a good voice. Yeah. Howard Stern has a good voice. James Earl Jones. Are, you ever hear them sing? No. no. <laughs> so I, I can sing a little bit. You probably see it in, 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 in musicals. Yeah. So, so you could even either be blessed with a, a good speaking, deep voice, or you could have this. Lousy speaking voice, but a good singer. I said, "Oh, that, that's actually kind of a toss." <laughs> I don't get a chance to sing that much, so I'm kind of happy with the voice I have. That's right. And they found them. They called the guy with the golden voice. Yeah. That was great. But you know what happened to that guy? The story goes was he was this. I think he was like a DJ or something or something. Oh, yeah. He actually had some sort of fame in yeah, like in like Cleveland or somewhere. And and what happened was or or, or Chicago or somewhere. And then he was a homeless guy. Yeah. And he still had that but they discovered him again. And then for like uh six months or so he became popular again on mm. talk shows and yeah. stuff. But then I think unfortunately he went back to the same things that got him homeless in the first place. Yeah. Drinking and drugs and stuff uh, like that. So you know you could always have a good voice. But 
Yeah, you could always have a good voice, but you know, you still have to you still have to live your life. Yeah, I forgot his name, but I don't remember his name. He had a um it was a popular name. It wasn't yeah. like a, a, a it was a rather simple name. Someone else actually had that name. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I'll, we'll probably find find out. Uh he was he was gone, found and then forgot. <laughs> yeah. That's how things go in life. Yeah. But, you know, I hope he's doing well. I'll, I'll be maybe maybe he's a DJ somewhere. It's not that hard being a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do it, if I could do it, anybody could can yeah. do it. <laughs> exactly, I could even be a DJ because I have a lot of uh, time next to me. Too. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about being a DJ. Um, uh, we'll talk about the jobs next week because we're almost through. But, yeah. but I, I, uh, th- 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 it's not really that hard a job in a sense that no matter how you do it, your boss is always going to tell you you're doing it wrong. And why did you play this music? And, and and in many cases, radio stations have to play certain songs. A lot of people get the idea DJs like the songs they play. No, they're just told to play the song. You know? yeah. And they keep their opinions to themselves that, yeah. that they hate the song. And a lot of DJs, I know DJs, and they would say, oh, I'm glad that song is no longer. I hate it having to play that every morning. Disco Duck or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we each had the 45 of that, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, that part of being a DJ is you have to, you play the same songs over and over again to people. The more they listen to anything, the more they like it. So yeah. that so it helps the sales of, of yeah, a record or yeah, something. Yeah. And the, and the fact I was uh, I visited a guy at a that worked at a radio station, yeah. and he actually showed me the playlist. I said I thought it was all uh, uh, what do you call it uh, requests. He goes because I always said the request lines are open, and here's the number one song, and here's the number two song, and here's number, and you get the idea that that people ask for those songs, but actually the truth is they were going to be played anyway, right. and the and and they said well almost every song at least in the top ten has already been requested by now by somebody, so uh, so it's already it is a request. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Time to go. No! Oh, no. I could do another three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> but I just hope you all enjoyed the show and may God bless you all and make sure that you all stay safe. Okay? Yes. You're watching the Mary Elizabeth Variety Hour. And it was a pleasure being here. My name is Kay Lazar and thanks for having me again on this show. And uh, and uh, maybe I'll see you next week. Definitely, yes. God bless you all. Take care.